Hey you guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Juana and I am the Crafty Pro Weekend. For those who are new, welcome. So today I'm gonna be embroidering a shirt. It's an Etsy order, it's an adult shirt. And this um, shirt is the applique um, design. So I decided to show you step by step on how to do it, regardless whether you have a single needle machine or a multi needle machine, okay? I will be using my Ricoma EM1010 to do this um, job. And yeah, so um, I hope you like it. Let's go at it. So these are the things that I'm gonna be um, needing for um, working on this embroidery today. So I'm gonna be needing the start from down here. I'm gonna be needing my hoop. This is a mighty hoop. It's a eight by 13, uh, meaning 13 in width and eight on the height. I'm gonna be needing my Duckbill scissors at the end to cut the um, colorway stabilizer. My pinky scissors, these are more, you know, smaller so that I can cut all the little things that I need to cut away, like little thread that I left over. So I um, always keep this snack knife with me in case there's some threads that I need to use it for. So this is what I'm going to be using at the end of the embroider in the back of the shirt to cover the stitches. It's a brand cloud cover. And this is the um, heat and bond light. And I use this um, to use with the appliques, all right? Um, also, I'm going to be using, of course, cutaway stabilizer and the printout of the embroidery file that I always use to make sure that I have it in the right position in the shirt. Um, and then also this is the fabric that I'm going to be using for the appliques, all these colors right here. I used it um, in a previous order of the same design, so I already have this one prepared with the um, heat and bond, so I don't have to redo it, which is good. But I still have to apply heat and bond on all these pieces, all right? And of course, um, I'm going to be using um, the shirt. It's a size extra large shirt. And of course, my hoop master to hook my shirt, which is perfectly amazing. I have videos um, that include this part of hooping. Well, I'm going to just hoop the shirt and you can follow me. If you have any questions, you can go to the description box below and you can ask me any questions. All right. This is an extra large shirt. I'm just measuring to make sure that I have enough room for the embroidery to happen. I'm following this line, which is the center, and the certain line on the file that I printed from um, Embryonians. And I might readjust it at once I hope it, I might re re readjust the, um, the design a little bit. I just want to ensure that I'm not going to be close to the hoop, which is up here. Because you don't want to hit the hoop when you're embroidering, right? So, yeah. I think this is about it. I have plenty of room to embroider the shirt. Plenty of room down here. Plenty of room up here. There we go. So now that I have the center, I know it's a little bit off, so I'm going to just move it to the left. I'm lo looking at this dot in here, which matches everything. This little hole in here, so I readjust it a little bit to the left. Okay, if you don't have um, the hoop master, you can also use this. This is called a backing holder, and you use it um, to hook also your garments. I have a video that is explaining all the process of using this backing holder. 
it amazing um, if you don't have this all right sometimes i use it if i don't feel like using um the hoop master okay so this is a good help for hooping also and it's also made by the um mighty hoop people all right you can order it it comes in all different sizes i have it all the way down to four by four and this is the one that um fits this one all right so this is um, ready to go to the machine, but before I do that, I have to get ready the fabric and I have to apply the heat and band. I am not gonna include it um, in the process because I don't want to make this video very long, um, but you can watch my other videos on how to do this. Um, yeah, it's pretty simple, all right? So I'll see you in a little bit. So all the colors are in and I put it on automatic manual, meaning that it's supposed to stop every change color so that I can put the uh, applique on it, okay? So, um, take this off because I don't need it. I'm going to trace one more time just to make it safe. I always do it like multiple times just to make sure that I'm in the right place. We are ready to start. I have this stick so that I don't so that I don't have to put my hand all the way back there. So let me let's go in. Oh, let me move it to the top. It's barely there. Let me see if the other piece. I'm gonna make sure that it covers all the embroidery area okay and it looks like it does it's stop because i need to um cut off the applique. I could use a um, fissure right here where I can take off the frame and come style to allow me to do it. I'm gonna do it this way now, but I prefer sometimes to take the whole thing out. I'm kind of scared that I might forget to push it back and it will embroider on the top of the frame. I mean, you know, to, for this purpose today, I'm gonna use that fissure which I think is an amazing feature, you know? I'm just trimming around, making sure that I don't cut any threads. I'm gonna move you back, because I need the space, okay? Let me take off my sweatshirt. It's been warm and cold in this room and early I started without a sweatshirt. Now I put a sweatshirt, now I'm warm again. I don't know. So, take it off. So I'm gonna be showing you this part so that you know the way I'm gonna be working at it for the next all the applicas, I'm not I'm just gonna let it go. I'm not gonna be talking much. I'm just gonna be doing it, okay? So I just wanted to give you an idea if you've never done an applique. Um, applique is 
for the most part, if you have a single needle machine, it is the same process, okay? Not much difference. That's why I like, sorry that I'm moving you around, taking the frame out. I like, I prefer taking the frame out because I have like more ways of moving the hoop around. Mm, you know. You just kind of like to, um, it's only one place. But it's a good feature again. If you're doing like small stuff, then you know, it's worth it. Being careful, because I don't want to cut the stitches. I haven't done an applique in a while. Um, I think the last order that I received for an adult shell in this um, kind of design was last year um, at the end of fall. I haven't, this is a fall item, you know. Um, when it comes to the children, I did a lot of appliques on my single needle machine and also on this one. But then since I started doing sketch designs, I have preferred to do sketch designs for anything because first of all, it's more economical for me, the one who's selling, you know, this is just a wrong stitch, wrong down stitch. Um, and you don't have to deal with applique, it's very time consuming the prepping time. And that's time and time is money, right? So, and people, I mean, you you cannot um, you can charge a little bit more, but there's oh it's embroidery, it's embroidery. They don't understand what it takes. So if it's a specific design that I like a lot, I will do it. Um, and I have kept them in my shop, in my Etsy shop. But for the most part, I'm concentrating more on um on sketch design. It's faster, and I don't have to do any prepping time other than just placing the frame. All right, so now I'm gonna push back the same icon. You see, I need to get back. All right. So now it's ready to do the other part. All right. I always check my garment that it's not stuck under or anything like that. Everything was good. Let's start. So now I have to do is place the next fabric on the top. Again, making sure that it's covering everything. Okay, so I'm going to cut this off and I'm going to take you back when I'm done with the applique because everything is the same. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay. Let's get to the next one.
this one has a lot of curves so i'm gonna take off, off the machine and I'm, okay so i finished trimming that we're gonna continue now so it should be easy to do from here See, that's why I prefer to take it off the frame. I'm going to move you around because when you have these curves in this frame in here, I need to get very close and yeah, like this. But I need to move myself. I suppose let me put on a table and move the frame around. I mean, the hook around. You know what I mean, right? This one has a lot of curves, so I'm going to take off the machine. Okay, so that one is already trimmed, so we're going to be moving for the next one. It's already trimmed. Let's go to the last one. Well, not the last one, the next one.
So now let's continue. I still have it an automatic manual, meaning that it's gonna stop after this color finish. I could put it in automatic, automatic, because it don't stop. But the reason why I left it this way, it was because um, after the next two, there's gonna be another applique in the middle, and then I will have to go to switch back. So I might as well just wait until that one is done, then I switch back to automatic, automatic. Okay, so this is done and I'll see you a little bit later. I'm gonna take it off the machine, place the um, cover in the back and I'll see you with the end result, okay? So I'm gonna iron the shirt. On the top I'm gonna press it because it has the heat and bond and I want the heat and bond to attach to the shirt. And then I'm gonna place the cloud cover. This is my um, Cricut 12.9 heat press. I'm not using the big one because for this I prefer to use the Cricut. to cool down a little bit and I'm gonna turn in the other the other way so that I can place the um the cloud cover so this is the end product people
and I'm gonna put the glow cool. Okay, people, so what is left for me to do now is to um, print the label. The label is print the shipping label and pack it. That's what I'm gonna do next. Yep, so let's go to the packing. So it's time for me to pack everything and I already put it on my cell phone bag. I have my shipping bag, sticker. I wanted to show you um, this one right here is the one I did. This is my sample. Um, that I did um, my first sample on this um, file. I did this in the um, olive um, header olive, and I did this with my single needle machine. Believe it or not, um, that's what I said. You can do the same thing. It's small if you notice, it is the same width um, because I use my five by twelve hoop, repositional hoop in the single needle embroidery machine. But if you notice, it's a little bit shorter because um, the single needle machine. Um, only do a height of five inches tall uh, and I'm talking about the brother SC1900 and this one of course material I was able to make it um, six inches tall it's about an inch higher in everything an inch and some okay so I just wanted to show you that if you don't have a multi needle machine you can do the same thing all right in your single needle machine so I just wanted to show you um, so yeah, so we're gonna be packing this um, and I'm gonna be printing my label and all of that, okay? I have my sticker, thank you sticker. Um, thank you note and the washing instructions, all right? Um, and also I have a sticker that I use. I My symbol um, is butterflies, I love butterflies. So I have to pick one of these stickers to use for this. I put this in the packet. Um, and this, if you notice, if this is like a set, the, it's not sold as a set, but I, you can buy the different pieces that matches your bag. Um, all right, and 
this is to me is much faster than having to print separate stickers and print separate separate everything i just buy in amazon and it's very inexpensive and i save a lot of time on having to print my own stickers or my own thank you note and all that all right um so you have that option also i chose the option of getting it from amazon <laughs> all right um so i'm gonna choose one of these um butterflies um i don't know they're all pretty i always put butterflies on my bags i have several different ones that i use um i think for this shirt i see the pink one what do you think guys i think i like this one and i like this one I always put it like some place in the bag. I think I'm gonna use this pink one as opposed to the green one. Yeah. I think the pink one is like a pinkish, not a pink pink, like a pinkish um peachy color. So I'm gonna use I'm gonna put it here. All right. And it's good because it's 3D, so you can drop uh, things like this. Even though it's going to get flat in the package, but at least you have that butterfly in there. It's reusable. They can take it out and they can use it someplace else. It's not a waste. The people can, you know, use it. Okay, so that's that. And then um, I'm going to... Um, to thank you, to speaker. I always put it in the opening of the bag. In the back. Right. And the back already says thank you. So um, I don't put another one in there. Um, when it's a single shirt, I use this small bag. When it's a um, big shirt, I have the bigger bag in purple. Um, yeah, but this one fits in here which is better for me when it comes to shipping costs, all right? That's why I use, so I have two different sizes. Um, yeah. Okay, so this is completed and this is gonna go to the post office like in the next hour or so, if I need to get dressed first, all right? Well, guys, this is the end of the video. Thank you for spending this time with me. Uh, for those who are new and have not subscribed yet, consider subscribing to my channel, The Crafted Puerto Rican. Um, this is another shirt that I did after I did my last video. It is the same template. I was practicing in another shirt. Um, this is a polyester shirt. That's why I wanted to try it on a polyester shirt. And the stones are different color. This is like a dark coffee copper color. And it came out with a polyester shirt. So it's perfect. So um, for those who are... Subscribe. Thank you for supporting. Uh, don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you can be notified of all my future videos. Okay. So thank you again for spending this time with me. I hope this video was helpful for you. Either if you have a multi needle machine or a single needle machine. Okay. So I will see you later. Bye bye. Hasta luego.